Hey there, this is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today we're going to make a module that spawns processes to greet people and to count. This is probably the simplest way to get started poking around at how processes work in Elixir. The docs are also a very good place to look at. Uh, you'll find the things for processes in the kernel. Uh, there are a couple of spawn functions and spawn links, spawn monitors, and then also uh, send and self are in the kernel documentation. We're just going to jump right in though. The very simplest process to start with would be one that does the exact same thing no matter what messages it receives. And we'll call this one greeter. It's going to be a function. And then inside the function, we have a receive block. And message it receives is actually, we're not even going to use any of this default boilerplate here. Usually it's going to be a tuple, but in this case, it's not even a tuple. In this case, we're just going to receive some value. And whatever that is, we're just going to do the same thing. And we'll say io.puts. Hello, friend. It's, it's a greeter. And let's start this up just like it is. There is one thing missing on line seven, but we'll get to that. We'll fire up IEX and load the file. So to spawn a new process, there are two ways we can call it. We can either call spawn with just one argument being the function, or we can call it with three arguments. First one being the module, second being the function name as an atom, and the third one being the arguments as a list. We're gonna do the second way. So spawn process intro, then the name of the function is greeter, we'll pass that as an atom, then the arguments in a list, greeter doesn't take any arguments, so it's just this. Notice that that returns a process ID. That's going to be very useful, so what we should do is actually save that I'll uh, say so greeter pid or gpid equals spawn process intro greeter and no arguments. And now we have access to this process ID. We can send things to the process with just send, then the process ID and whatever message we're sending. We'll send the message foo. You can see it answered, hello friend. However, it doesn't work if we try it again. Notice the first time we got a response, the second time we didn't. The reason is this function has already completed and process has exited. So what we can do is we can have greeter call itself at the end. So now this greeter will wait to receive something. When it receives something, it will respond, hello friend, whatever it receives and then greeter will call itself so it will be waiting again to receive some sort of input and whatever the input is it'll do the same thing again and call itself again so it'll just keep on looping forever it's not going to be doing anything in the loop until it receives any information so it's not constantly calling itself and burning cpu cycles or anything like that it's just waiting to receive some sort of message now we can recompile our file. And make a new PID and send a message to that PID. And now we should be able to do it more than once. And notice it says hello friend if we say foo. If we pass the SDF, it still says hello friend. Pass it the number 987. Same deal. Uh, we could even uh, use uh, uh, the enum module to send it a bunch of messages. Hi, what's up, howdy, dot, dot, dot. And um, dot each, let's see here, it's gonna be send gpid and the argument from enum dot each. So if we send each of these things to it and we got Hello friend, four times from the greeter, just like we'd expect with the four inputs. And that's really all there is to it. It's not really very exciting, but it'll greet whenever someone sends in a message. 
Now, let's make something a little bit more interesting. Let's make a counter. Uh, close the terminal because we don't need that right now. We'll call this function counter and the body is going to be another receive block just like it was before. And this time we'll just use one value, but we will keep track of whatever we receive. And this counter will put out whatever the value was. So io.puts value. And then we'll delay by half a second. Do that with process.sleep. And once again, this really doesn't hurt anything because it's just one very lightweight process sleeping. It's not stopping your whole VM or anything like that. And unlike before, we'll actually have this process send something. Uh, it'll send to itself and just send the value plus one. And once again, we've got to call itself so that it keeps on running after the first time it receives something. We'll recompile and self does not exist and ah uh, yes. All right, recompile again. Now we'll get a, a PID for the counter. So we'll call this one CPID, counter PID equals spawn process intro counter as an atom and no arguments send cpid now this needs to take a specific value so we send it foo that's not going to work arithmetic error we can't take foo if we send it one it does nothing because the process has already crashed raised an exception we lost it let's try this again now we can see the process is counting and all is good. Counting is a little bit boring, so let's change this into doubling the value. We'll just call this one doubler. And instead of making a value plus one, we'll make it value times two. And we'll compile again. And notice that we are still getting these uh, these numbers counting up and up and up. We do still have CPID, so let's kill it. Let's uh, process. You know what? That's a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna close the shell and and let's make this two and a half seconds. That'll give us a lot more time to kill the process. And we'll uh, open up the process.intro again. This time we'll spawn a doubler process. So dpid equals spawn process intro and the atom doubler and no arguments at all. So just an empty list. Now remember I said there were two syntaxes. This is one way. The other is if we just pass it the function itself. Now this is an anonymous function. So we've got to do this and give it the array of zero. And that'll do the exact same thing as the previous syntax did. And let's send it a starting value of four. At four, then it calls itself, says eight, 16, and so on and so on. To kill this, we're gonna use process.exit and then the PID, and we'll just send it an okay atom. Um, we could send it a kill atom, but it's not necessary to in normal circumstances. I haven't actually uh, ever had to use that or dug into it too much. So process.exit dpid and okay. Okay, that was that was a little slow, but we could spawn it again and get it running. And now it should be uh, it should be much much clearer because we just uh, hit up and kill it from the history. So 32, 64, exit that, and we're done with the process. And there are a couple other things worth looking at. Uh, so we still got this this deep head here. Seems like it shouldn't even be there at all. 
but it's just an ID. So in order to see if there is a process or if the process is alive, we can do process dot alive question mark and then pass it to PID. And we see that it is not alive. Now we'll spawn a new process with that doubler and recheck and now it is alive. The other thing is we can actually get this process ID another way. In IEX we can use 0 and then comma 98 comma 0 so using the same numbers that we saw in the PID there and we can do the exact same things. So we could say uh, process dot exit and pass it that PID and OK and now it's no longer alive. Since processes are a foundational part of Elixir, I have a challenge for you today. See if you can make a module with two processes. The first one will be called controller, and it will listen for a message of either the atom start or the atom stop. If the controller process receives the atom start, it starts a counter process that just counts numbers like the one in this module. And if the controller process receives the atom stop, then it stops the counter. In order to do that, the controller process will have to keep track of the counter process's PID. It's a bit more involved, but all the parts for it are here in this episode. So good luck, and if you found this useful, definitely sign up for a free account at alchemist.camp. And until next time, Odon.